All right, let's take a look at Luna, one of my favorite coins of all time. Uh, it is my biggest position. Short term time frame, right? If we take a Fibonacci pool from the very bottom to the very top, this is the CC, and you can see we basically bounce there. This is one of the best places that things bounce from generally. Um, and if we do another one from here to here, one would say maybe, maybe it'll hit up back up here. Maybe it'll reject. I'm not sure. We kind of have to look at Bitcoin to see what's going on, but this is super short term with a, a five minute time frame. Um, when we look at the daily for Luna, it is for right now following this parallel channel. Um, usually when something goes up and then it consolidates upwards like this, that's usually a bad sign. That's usually a sign that it's going to do something like this where it pumps up more and then it comes down. That is usually what happens for these types of channels, but it's not always. You can see it um, with Bitcoin. When we moved from 29,000 up, we kept doing a, a, a upwards consolidation like this. So technically, if there is strong momentum, it is very much possible that we just blast up and boost up from here. Uh, but for now, I would just say, they always say, just trade the channel as it's presented to you um, and trade the range that it's in. So you can see here that on a longer term time frame, uh, Luna has really just done super well. Targets that I have are $69, $69 and then about $79. I don't know if I marked out anything further. And really all this is, so then $97, basically around 100 as a key level, then 122, and then 150. And all of this is really just a Fibonacci pull. Um, it's actually super accurate, but what you wanna do, so as a quick example, right? If we do a trend-based Fibonacci and we take it from this, this, to the low, right? We use this as a way to kind of predict what future will be like. So you can see that we first came and we touched the 1.414. So you can say, okay, if price acts the same way with Luna for this pump, is it possible that it'll do the same thing? Now it's a little bit tricky because this is not the same pattern, right? So you, you can't really, and that's, that's the one issue I have is you can't really just be like, okay, let's do it to here and then to here, right? Because it's not really the same pattern. And yeah, I, I did, I believe that's why this box is here for the one, uh, dot four, one, four, but the level of accuracy is probably not going to be there. Um, so I think the only other possibility would be like still using this old one. Okay, so this is the 3.618 and I believe I also took right here and pulled the expansion here as well. Nope. That's not where I pulled it from. Um, it might be that I used, this isn't even 100% accurate since I'm not ensuring that it's clicking the right area. So one might say that, hey, like, this is the 3.618 here, or the old one, and there's nothing else here. So actually, it's interesting because this one has two levels of confluence, right? It has from this trend Fibonacci base pool and also from this one as well. I believe we took it from like right here, right here. Yeah, I think my clicking is 100% accurate. I'm using the trackpad because I have to plug in my microphone to the outlet so I can't use my mouse. Uh, but basically, this is definitely going to be an area I'm looking for. And I also bet that if we take this from this to this, and we pull it from, oops. Let's go. 
if we pull this blue one, let's say about right here. Oh, not the same area. I guess if we did something like this on the top of the, oh, not even the same. Okay, anyway. Um, so yeah, I think the level, of, I don't remember why I charted these out, but I would imagine that this is the 3.618 is why I did this first one. But maybe we see something like this where, you know, maybe crypto goes down before the big push up, hits this, comes back down, hits this one right here, consolidates barely, and then blasts off. So hard without my mouse. Um, and then blasts off to this level and, and et cetera. But uh, these are just levels that you want to watch price action, right? So like if we end up reaching right here, and we just like blast off past it you can tell by the momentum and the volume that comes in of how it reacts to that level i'll show you a quick example and i made a mistake on this i know we're talking about luna but i think this is just a good example is slp i had been predicting this one for quite some time um because i have a few scholars and i was just waiting for this Looks like I deleted my TA on this, unfortunately. But it was in a descending wedge. And I had mapped out that it would price would basically hit around $8 or $0.08. Cents, around $0.08. Cents. And price just kept pumping. It pumped way past. And I don't know if this was bots or if it was something else. But it's so interesting that price has come back down to that, that resistance level and it's testing it now as support. I think it broke a little bit below it, but it's it's staying in this level now. But that's still a pump, right? A, a, quite a pump. Uh, basically a 2x pump. So if you have scholars, right, the time to sell would have been at this point. Uh, I mean, at this point, I sold that like point or something like nine cents um but i really should have looked at the volume and just like waited a bit and seen how it how it reacted but my point is is when you look at these types of things i'm starting to see for the bull run that everything is being blown past if we look at sand right this level of resistance that i marked out quite some time ago has been completely like blown through right it just went right past it and it came down and retested it and it just blew straight past. And I would imagine that the same thing is gonna happen. Um, I've actually been left behind a few times. Um, for example, engine, right? The same thing happened to me where I had a level marked out. It was this green one right here. And I sold here. Well, price went straight past it, and then I was like, okay, well. I can't buy back in because I'm not. I don't allow myself to buy back in higher. And then it went straight below it, and I ended up rebuying like I don't know somewhere below. I think it was on the yellow line. Um, I think I resold it like three bucks. Then it came back down. Um, but I had already put it into something else. But anyway, this is something I'm noticing where right now, since we're in a bull run, these levels of that are usually really strong resistances are just being blown right past, but we do end up keep test retesting it because I think if we look at the sentiment right now, what's happening is people are so bullish on crypto that they're just like, like the technical analysis is basically some psychology, right? So it's like, okay, well, there's so much euphoria and so much uh, belief in crypto that people just are dumping money in and then of course it crashes down and it comes back even below but this is something we're seeing quite a lot in crypto and i would imagine that the same thing is going to happen to these levels especially the more bullish we get we may see something wild right where it just completely blasts through all of these but it will come back and retest at some point and that's something you got to be very wary about is you do not want to be buying on these tops you want to be planning your trades really early on especially like with luna right if it's in this channel like sure buy um but once we start breaking out it starts to get more and more dangerous where it's just like honestly if this wasn't a bull run it would be a bad idea to be buying an upward channel anyway this isn't something you want to be buying 
normally and I'm trying to adjust my level of risk to a bull market now because I'm starting to see these really odd um my safe plays when we were in the mini bear market were really really good for that time but right now it looks like I'm selling too early at levels of resistances because we keep blowing past and even though we do come back down and I do buy like what 5% lower it's not what I could have made with like a 30% lower re-entry um but anyway if you want you can sign up to trading view and get like a 30% uh off they usually have like a 30 percent off you just gotta like keep trying keep loading it up um and then you can set up alerts which i think is very vital to crypto um especially if you're gonna do ta but anyhow my thoughts on luna is that this definitely is a super strong coin i know crypto banter had just talked about them with do Kwan in it uh but i really like this coin a lot it is my biggest holding and it's something that i really really believe in a lot i wouldn't even mind holding it in a bear market but of course if i can time out the unstaking i'll do so uh but you can also stake ust us terra for 20 percent apy and that is just a gem right that's like a play for a bear market is to just park your money on the tops like when you start seeing luna pop and you're able to really capitalize on it is to dump your money into ust and stake it for 20%. So I wonder one final thing. Maybe we oops. Okay. So yeah, this is nice. It looks like we're bouncing off of this. Maybe we'll continue to bounce for some time before we break up to the next Fibonacci speed fan and then maybe tap this one around December. Um, and then maybe from there we just do that blow off top. But yeah, uh, if you guys don't already use a speed fan, it's great for understanding time to price. Um, you can use it in confluence with uh, Fibonacci time, which I'm not good at. But it's something you can consider, right? Where you can just be like, okay, this is where we start to go down, this is where we start to go up, etc. I'm not good at it, so I'm not going to try to teach it. But I'm sure you can YouTube it. Anyhow, I would imagine that we would play in this channel for some time while still doing these horizontal levels of support. Um, whilst, while still like bouncing off or touching or even bouncing below. And then let's say we, we use this as a final level of support where it goes to right here. And then goes up to the next level and then does something like this. Um, of course, price doesn't move like that. It might be something like this. Bounce a little bit up. Back test it. And then come back down to the next level. And then go up. Something like that. But anyway, I hope this helps. Um, a really key level, I think, would be the $70 range. And then the $80 range. I do think that those will be really strong key levels. And then the next would be something like $100. Um, note that it's cool that this kind of aligns with uh, actual dollar amount of like $80, $70, $100. Because I think psychologically that plays on people's mind as well. Targets for the end of this bull run. Like I would not be surprised if it hits $150. Um, and it could blow past that. But that's a 3x from where we're at now. Now, if you want even better gains, right, Luna probably isn't for you, but uh, to me, it's still a really good coin that, like, I would not be afraid of holding in a, in a bear. If I do one final thing, right, if I take Fibonacci pool from, let's say it does hit $150. You could imagine that maybe, right, if we blow all the way up to $150 and we full on bear market, well, the drop from $150, let's say the CC is a 61% drop. That's still $57. That's still, you know, like above what we're at now. And so that's why I don't mind holding this in a, in a um, bear market. But again, if I can, I will do my best to like time selling it and and dca out and that way in the bear market i can actually rebuy a lot more than what i had but because luna has a 21 day on staking it makes it a little bit hard uh, 
yeah, so anyway, if you look at the greater picture of things, a lot of crypto coins holding it through a bear isn't as bad as some people make it out to be. And yeah, like you should definitely sell these tops, but it's hard when there's a unstaking requirement with Luna. So it's not like you can time 21 days before the, the bull market ends. Nobody knows that. Uh, so anyway, I hope you <laughs>